Welcome once again to the Tin Dog Podcast. This time I'll be talking mainly about the second episode of the new series of Torchwood, that's the episode called Sleeper. But before I do, I'd like to thank everyone who's taken the time this week to email me. It seems that uh, deciding to cover Torchwood and, of course, the new Doctor Who series was a good decision, so that's great. There was someone on iTunes who left feedback saying that they'd quite like me to have a co-host. Well... Sadly, the Tin Dog podcast is basically me sitting with a tiny little recorder chatting away to you. And that's kind of how it's going to stay. However, if you do want to hear me talk to other people about Doctor Who, I suggest you check out some of the Podshock live recordings because I'm often one of the people who phone up and have a chat there. For example, this weekend I'll be going on the live show and talking about Christopher Eccleston's time in the TARDIS, so that'll be well worth listening to. Well, their show will be well worth listening to. Whether it's worth listening to me or not, that's up to you. You may be able to tell that there's a slight difference in mic quality this time. I have acquired a small uh, Sony condenser mic, which I'm trying out. The one that I was using um, actually fell apart, so I apologise for that. So this is an experiment. It may or may not work. I hope that the quality is quite well. I would like to know what you think of it. But anyway, that's enough chat. You don't want to hear about my technical prowess or lack of it. You want to know what I thought of episode 2.2 of Torchwood Sleeper. In the trailer, you've got them starting going, no, no, not the mind probe, which is rather weird because, let's face it, that's the sort of thing they used to say on Doctor Who and it would make people go, oh, that's good crashing on and of course they would crash on with the rest of the plot but of course this is postmodern torchwood where they know fine well no no not the mind probe it will just get a laugh out of some hardcore old school fans basic plot seemed very familiar to me but i couldn't for the life of me figure out where from was it an old tomorrow people plot or was it something else i i know that it does have influences from you know proper modern terrorist sleeper cells and things like that Was it a little Babylon 5-like? I'm not completely sure. One thing that was very good in this episode, and I'd like to see more of, is Comedy Yanto. Yes, let's milk that dry wit mine for all it's worth. Some people have said that he's using, you know, jokes worse than some Bob Monkhouse stuff. Well, that's fair enough. But I, for one, really don't mind at all. Worth mentioning in this episode, of course, was the other members of the Sleeper Cell. The not particularly well um, delivered, I think, rather than picking on a guy's acting ability. I think the choices he made were odd in his standing up, being a bit robotic, got a thing on his arm. Um, But for me, the best member of the sleeper cell had to be Comedy Charva Girl. There had been a line earlier on where the main character, the one who had discovered she wasn't human, had said she might want to have kids one day. Now, the Charva, sorry, for many people in listening to this, they're not from Newcastle, so they won't call them Chavas. They'll call them Chavs. Um, we had Chavas in Newcastle for about eight years before the rest of the country went Chav. So perhaps we could just say that we invented them. I don't know. I prefer the word Chava to Chav, but that's just me. Have I digressed? You know I have. Have a drink. For those of you living in America, you will possibly have no idea what I mean. A Chava or Chav is um, usually a female, but often a male. Um, the sort of people who buy a lot of Burberry, that um, beige tartan that's so popular with a certain crowd, and they also buy far too much reasonably cheap gold jewellery. This is the girl with the pushchair. That's why I mentioned the whole I'd like a child one day, because perhaps she has actually gone ahead and done that and had a child. Of course, she could have just stolen it. Hmm. Now, normally, your chav has a lot of gold jewellery on, so perhaps this specific alien race has taken on the Cybermen before. Hmm, nice bit of cross pollinization there. They could be the world's greatest defence against a cyber invasion. And for those new school fans, remember, Cybermen used to be allergic to gold, and now they just don't care. I don't genuinely have a lot to say about this particular story. It was good. It was an improvement on last year. But then again, so was last week. 
I hope that the series continues in this vein. By far it wasn't the worst story I've ever come across, but it wasn't the greatest. It's well worth sticking with Torchwood just for this. Which brings me to a point I've been meaning to ask people, or indeed you could always ask yourself because I'm sure you'll be able to get quite a nice conversation out of that. If Torchwood wasn't related to Doctor Who at all, i.e. imagine a universe where Russell T. Davis had been approached not to create in Doctor Who or bring it back, but was asked what series have you got in mind and he would then turn around and say well I've got this idea for a show called Excalibur and Excalibur was basically Torchwood. So imagine a universe that exists with a show called Excalibur, which is Torchwood, and has no links to Doctor Who. Would you still watch it? Would you still enjoy it? Hmm. Would you hate it as much as you sometimes do? Would you love it slightly more because you didn't have the Doctor Who baggage left over? These are questions I'm sure we can all ask ourselves, possibly in a pub, amongst our friends. And with that, I'll leave you. Next week I'll be reviewing next week's Torchwood show, but also I'll be reviewing the forthcoming DVD release of The Time Meddler. I've got the review for that already sorted, so I am looking forward to telling you all about it. Thanks for listening. Be seeing you. You have been listening to the Tim Dog Podcast. Doctor Who and its associated shows are all trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Contact us at tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk.